Welcome. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> How you doing? It's How's been. It oh my goodness! I need to mute my Twitch stream in the other window. It's a great day for the podcast. How's it going, everyone? My name is Four Bears. Joined here by Puppy today. Are you gonna be a permanent fixture on the pod, Puppy? Is this what's going on? Are you final? Are you finally here and coming back? Last time wasn't a one shot. No, this is not not just a one shot. No, no, I'm <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm definitely back for good. So at least until they send me off somewhere else again. Oh continue. yeah. Give myself something ridiculous. I didn't know. So I can't guarantee it, but I'm here for I'm here for a while. So get used to it. Get used to this beautiful English place. Yeah. No. Of course. Everyone's like. Or not everyone. One person is like four B signature. Hello and welcome. It's true. I say that a lot. It's my go-to for everything, and I absolutely love it. So, <laughs> um, how's your week been? I'm still kind of getting in the mindset of this whole thing. How's your week been, pups? Uh, not too bad. Yeah. Uh, did did, live, did some placements. Uh, did some. Did some, played some games. Got immensely frustrated. Managed to smash up one of my keyboards. Really. Uh, Damaged my hands in doing so, so a bit of a dead end. I'm not gonna lie, but uh, okay. Yeah, so I, I got a nice new shiny new keyboard. Hey. Congratulations. And a new headset, so yeah, feeling pretty good. I don't know about the headset though, because it's, it's it's kind of cutting out my uh, own voice a little bit. So is that the uh, is that like the Steel voice? Series headset? And forgive the it volume is, adjustments. Yeah, I'm just Arctis like seven. The Arctis Seven. I've heard good things about that. I think Rush has that. It's it's I don't, I don't know how to feel about it. Honestly. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about the sound at the moment. I'm still trying to get used to it. I'm okay. It. We'll see. We'll yeah. See, see I'm a fan of like wired headsets things. through and through. I just think like wired, yeah. like wired beats wireless every day of the week. But I mean, hey, you know, your mileage may vary. We're not here for gear recommendations though. We're here for getting into the podcast. We're gonna start off with some upper division. Um, I don't know, sort of a number division recap. So, you know, only one new game this week. MC went 3-1 over Night Ops. Puppy, both you were there, both I was there. What'd you think of that game? Uh, it's a really, really good one to watch, actually, and it was a lot closer than, than the, the scores kind of said, really. Mm -hmm. I, think, uh, I think Murphy Kuyo definitely uh, put out all the stops to kind of pull that win, really, and they just kind of performed better on the day, really. Mm -hmm. um, the they came they, they had a lot of mirror matchups so it was very much down to kind of individual uh, plays uh, a mm -hmm. lot of it came around to when the Sombra ZMP was coming up and because uh, you saw Sombra goes quite a lot in uh, right right so, uh, I know that Mercury Cougars uh, had to do a few last minute changes and stuff like that due to uh, due to a couple of people having to drop out of the game so we saw K Boogie on the uh, on the on the brig uh, on the brig. <laughs> Yeah, uh, which is unusual. Uh, he did actually perform really, really well. He Definitely did, well. yeah. Got a couple of boops on the on the mm -hmm. Zaya. Forget, um, forget who was on the Zaya. Zarya was sorry for that. Is that right? So, no, no. On on the uh, on night ops. Oh, on night ops. Um, I. Oh my god, I'm so bad. I forget as well. I remember payoff is main tank because we're going to interview him today. Um, was it Chat Noir? No. It no. Was, no, it, it was, yeah, no, it was, it, it was, was because Moose was the Sombra, that's right. He was, yes, yeah. that was it. Thank you. So you yep. get a couple times. Rush is like That's Chat Noir and Moose. Oh, I appreciate you, Rush. Always there for us. Your Zen shots were incredible last time. Um, and yeah, so really solid positioning. I feel like MC's willingness to like take the Sombra Goats mirror or like or like really like, take Sombra Goats and really learn how to play it against traditional goats, like mm -hmm. actually led them to victory on two out of those four maps, like Rialto and Volskaya specifically. Um, but we'll have a moment to talk about that with End. Uh, we're gonna have a quick meta discussion with him just because it's fun to have people on and see what they think. Other uh, other pertinent results, you know, the Suya KO match is gonna happen. The BT Skyhounds match is gonna happen. And uh, hey, you know, we're still waiting on that Suya LBLO match. I wonder when that's going to happen. And I mean, hey, I hope uh, I hope we do get to see that game played. It's always a bit of a tragedy when these forfeits happen. Um, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about lower division. And I just realized I haven't updated these graphics. I have them in my computer, but they are not here on screen. That's tragic. All right. So... <laughs> That's... We, can, we can work with what we got, buddy. Just work with what we got. Okay, we great. Got. 
That's embarrassing. It is what it is. Um, real quick, week five, MC went 3-1 against LBLO. 5 heads 3-1 against 7 sins. Skyhound Suya, yet to happen. Night Ops took the 4-0 over Breakthrough due to a forfeit. You're not going to see these on screen. You're not going to see these on screen. Unfortunately, I'm terrible. I'm sorry. Um, and well, you know, now is the time to start talking a little bit about playoffs you know playoffs um there was a announcement earlier where the seed one would go against seed four seed two against seed three and as of right now it's almost confirmed and by confirmed i mean like there's there, there's a really like low i guess chance of variation that 05 eds is going to remain the number one seed uh mc is going to remain that number four seed so they're going to be facing off against each other predicted and then in the middle, we're going to have that Seven Sins versus Night Ops um, battle again. And the idea behind that is that I I can't make any predictions on the Seven Sins Night Ops, uh, you know, scramble just because they're week seven opponents. They're going to be, they're going to battle each other next week. So I don't exactly know how that's going to pan out. But here's hoping that whichever team wins and whichever team loses, both of those can adapt fast. Um just because they're gonna have to be able to battle each other again very very soon so yeah so this is quite an quite an interesting uh, little bit that goes on there i wonder if maybe uh we see o5 heads kind of sandbag a bit maybe oh, uh, it, oh do, do you do you think that's what's gonna happen they're going to sandbag hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you see it happen sometimes, uh, especially in OWL. I'd wonder if we'll see it this time. Uh, oh, whoops, that's not supposed to be up. there. Um, you know, anything can happen. Anything can happen. Um, let's see. Where where are you? <laughs> you struggling, buddy? I am struggling. I really wanted to get these graphics up. It's, the, it's that five hours that you spent stood up yesterday. You worked too hard. Man. I did. I, I did. I DJed a wedding. It was a very, very hard time. Apologies. Um, I I did want to ask, how do you think the MC05 head game is going to go? As someone who's an assistant coach for MC, like, what have you guys been doing? I think looking at sort of yesterday's game with uh, with Murphy Cougars, um, it def they definitely look really, really strong. And their Sombra Goats with Herbs, um, I think, looks really, really strong at the moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to see O5 heads, but just looking at their kind of uh, map differential alone at up at plus 15. I was about uh, to say, is that intimidating at all? Uh, it's, it's a very impressive score, but it doesn't mean they're unbeatable. I mean, they've dropped a couple of maps um, so uh, throughout the season, so there's no reason why MC can't take it to them. And I, I have all, all faith in, in, in the guys uh, to sort of give them a good go mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and hopefully bring it home. Oh, oh, is that a, is, is that a, what is it, like a Europe World Cup reference? Oh, that's dated. Oh, my goodness. It's coming home, boys. It's, it's coming home, boys. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. I, I can't believe I know that. <laughs> hey, it's, it's, it's a, it's, yeah, it's, it's an Englishism. It's an Englishism. I like that word. That's a good word. Um, but, hey, you know, I don't want to belabor anyone else to be here longer than they need to be we do have our first interview guest but also someone who we're just here to chat with and a player from unknown academy uh let's get him in here and come on in every time you say that you remind me of the uh i can't remember what what what, what one it was the game show is like come on then. oh that's uh bob barker from price is right Price is but right. you're not American. That's the thing. I can't expect you to know that. Exactly. Uh, American Omega Lob. He's not American. <laughs> and welcome to the show. Taken Brit. Hello guys. I'm N. Hey. I am the best flex DPS. Oh wait. No, sorry, sorry. I mean, I'm the worst DPS. Okay, that's bad. So before, <laughs> so when I first asked N to come on the show, he said he'd do his intro in Korean. He did not do that. Let the oh, record show. Oh, uh, yeah. and you also use Janu and that there. All right, I think I heard Janu in there. Did you just say you're better than this than the Vancouver <laughs> Titans? Yes. All right. Well, I mean, you heard it here first. This man is just sandbagging super hard in a tier, like four and a half league. That's what I'm gonna say. We're not we're not tier three tier just yet. Uh, yeah, exactly. We're 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 tier four and a half. 
That's where we're at right now. <laughs> when not we get tier five, not quite tier four. When we we're, we're when we get the all the side. partnerships with all the other OW, uh, you know, kind of like going around tourneys, which we're working on, by the way. That's a staff insight for you. Then we'll be tier four. But in any case, awesome. and thank you for being on the show. How are you? How was your weekend? My sleep schedule wants to kill me. Yeah. That's about it. That's a big mood. Yeah. I feel like a lot of people are like, hey, it's the summer. We're going to spend 18 hours gaming, eight hours, you know, trying our best to sleep. And they just wake up malnourished, hungry, and dehydrated. And it's not a fun time for anyone. No, I'm just thinking of how I can buy Twice album. That's about it. Is that a K-pop group? Yes, it is. Do they spell twice with the two? Like, is it two W I C E? No, it's no? just twice. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, we know about the title. Thank you. Um, but in any case, I, uh, I I wanted to get into it. You know, as someone who's graduated lower division, right? I think you're kind of like hovering on that range, but you're still considered a lower division graduate. Congratulations on that. Um, I want to ask a little bit about sort of the inside mechanisms of Unknown Academy, how you guys are working on this season. How's it been being part of a team that's had such significant roster changes consistently over the board? It's been rough, but we're, we're like hanging in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little uh, bit about that? So, long story short, two of the players didn't like how we we're managed sprints mm -hmm. and like it wasn't our problem because we couldn't do anything because one of the coaches was in the cage and the other coach i don't know what he was doing mm -hmm. and uh so then we had like a really scuff scrim and they like all right we quit mm -hmm. okay it's i think that's the issue with these these kind of like um so this league is 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 there's a lot of time that has to be put in to kind of make this work and right and as we all have day jobs we all get to go to school we all go to uh you know college whatever and yeah it's, it's, it's tough to kind of work yourself around this and it sees such like a high turnover of people don't you and it's um I, so i feel for you man i feel for you so oh, oh no go ahead by all means uh, i think most of the players that left it was mostly right after a scuff scrim. What made it? What made it so bad? Uh, like we, our big problem in the whole team is the comms while playing games. Mm -hmm. Like we got really silent sometimes, and so mm -hmm. I, I guess they get they got tilted for that and then left, or like somebody correcting one of the other players' play and telling them man. Like not what to not do, so mm -hmm. then it can help, and then they get tilted off that and then dip. I feel like there's so much to be said for like, I feel like pride has no place in a scrim. Like I feel like suppose in some alternate universe where Puppy and I are teammates and he's a lower SR than me, which is fundamentally impossible, and he's like, hey, I think your positioning's a little off. Like I can't be, I can't be like, oh, I'm not gonna let this guy tell me what to do or anything like that. That's that's, I mean, that's not helpful for anyone. And do you think there was a bit of that going on? Like, a lot of people are like, who are you to tell me how to go about doing things? A bit. Yeah. I can see that. I can see why that'd be a, that'd be a bit of an issue. But I, and, and I do want to ask, I feel like this has been the burning question on a lot of people's minds. I don't mean to throw anyone under the bus when I say this, but when there's a lot of turnover... A lot of people look to the administration of a team as responsible for maybe not having a bit of as nurturing an environment or maybe it's they're like they're like not doing their part to make sure it's not toxic was there anything like that or has there been it's just been a string of unlucky situations where people are just bouncing when they need to i think it's just unlucky That's yeah what we call unlucky unknown unlucky academy as well. <laughs> unlucky academy yeah no i see that unknown academy okay I think it's I think it's kind of tough because I mean we're all kind of uh, know each other through uh, online and and it's so impersonal sometimes you know you don't if you haven't put a face to someone or you haven't actually met them in person it's so hard to kind of actually um, engage with that person on, on that right. kind of level and I think definitely like you feel no 
if if you haven't kind of spent a lot of time with that person then you kind of feel no loyalty and it's, it's tough when you're constantly changing over those people and, mm-hmm. you know they're kind of just coming in as another one where it's like well i'll see how it goes and if it doesn't work i'll leave in a week and you know, that, that happens far too often i think uh, yeah people, people's mentality but i think it's best that those people do move on because at the end of the day uh, if they haven't got the right mentality for it they're better off without them to be honest I wanted to ask about your very recent game. You guys won. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. And now, oh, wow. now, now, could you break down that game? Who was it against? What was your score? And just it how was, do you think it went? It was against Seven SA. Mm-hmm. We lost the first map, but I'll say this: we could have four all them if my if our mercy didn't push me off the ledge. <laughs> right onto them <laughs> yeah okay what were you playing out of curiosity i was i wasn't was able to see that game you were a bastion is yeah are, are people able to move bastion in turret form like that by nudging <laughs> is that a thing you can do no i got res and the mercy like kind of pushing me off the ledge okay while i was over time okay yeah all right more work man Oh my goodness! Well, you know, luckily we'll be able to we'll we'll, we'll be able to see some so, some of some of that and uh, some of other dropping down plays when we check out you know other academy games. We'll hash this a little later, um, but okay, three one versus seven SA. Why? Uh, what do you think was responsible for you for unknown academy sort of getting their stride sort of throughout the game? Like, do you think? Do you think that once you guys found your footing, it was just 100% throttle the entire time, or did you kind of ease up to it? I think because uh, we scrimmed against 7SA mm-hmm. a lot, we got used to what they play or what they do and how they work. And so when it was game time, we were serious and we just went for it. We also played DPS comps, which mm-hmm. are our best. Interesting. Okay, and I think in like a in a definite goats riddled meta, maybe maybe DPS is starting to sort of carve out a niche for itself. Do you think that that now there's kind of a time that people have forgotten how to play against DPS comps? I've looked inside of different lower division teams, and I they like mostly played goats mm-hmm. as their base point. I mean, of course. I feel like people in OWL play GOATS as their base point, you know? Yeah. And so, I think they're, like, too focused on playing GOATS. Mm-hmm. They forget how to deal with, like, other comps. Right. And, uh, you know, I actually wanted to run one of these comps by you. Uh, this is the Vancouver Titans versus Atlanta Rain. The Rain is on defense on Paris. Uh, the Titans break the bunker by running Sombra, Doomfist, Farmercy... Soldier and Ball. That's quad DPS Ball Mercy. Are we gonna see something as crazy as that coming out coming out from a uh, UA? I cannot leak. I don't, <laughs> I don't know myself. We just play. You just kind of play what's best and hope for the best. Is that right? No, we just play random comedy. We're like, hey, let's go. Hey, let's go, and hopefully, you know, you'll be able to take that pretty confident mentality with you against a uh, lightbringer's legacy that's tonight at eight is that right oh wait it is let me check yes <laughs> unknown oh, academy has a game <laughs> against the lightbringer's legacy I... tonight at eight est <laughs> I, get I, I, got... <laughs> I just remembered about that i was okay. able to go to sleep early today okay well don't do that <laughs> i won't <laughs> <laughs> uh, Wait, on. I even checked it and like I can make it. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. I'm just got that memory. So. All right. Well, it's, it's, it's good that you came on the pod then. Yeah, okay. I was about to say that's what that, are you gonna do? That's just, that's lucky. Yeah. You guys became lucky academy for just for just a split second. Congratulations, you're going to have your DPS. <laughs> uh lb <laughs> leftovers or legacy leftovers is the upper division team i believe uh so it would be unknown academy versus lightbringers legacy unless i'm mistaken in which case i'm dumb i think it's yeah it's legacy great um so double check that if uh if you have if you have a game and if you do i mean everyone please please watch it uh also 
tonight, O5 Heads versus Lightbringers Leftovers. So if you're a Lightbringers fan, hey, you're going to get a double help in the games. Also, tonight's the half hour earlier at 7.30. So um, you can always request to be in those games, by the way. Um, just ask whoever's hosting, hey, you know, can I can I have a spectate slot if you ever want to just see your favorite players play or, hey, maybe analyze, scout some teams. That's on you. Well, um, I uh, I wish you luck in uh, in your next game, you know, against uh, against Lightbringers Legacy. Are there any... Can I ask how you guys are preparing for them? Uh, we look through, like, the old VODs and um, OWP. Mm -hmm. um, of their games and we see what they play mm -hmm. and so we're like okay we have like a let's like, a guessing on what they're going to do okay now can now can you hit me with a prediction on what you think they're going to do then goats most likely goats most likely i feel like I, I i feel like if i were a new person coming into overwatch and i'm like what are they gonna run goats most likely <laughs> come on you can give me a bit more detail than that Three, three, three. Alrighty, there, there. We have nine players on their team. You heard it here first. Correction, correction. O five heads and uh, and uh, Lightbringers leftovers. In fact, got moved to Thursday. Uh, forgive me, forgive me for that. Um, and yeah, well, all right. I'll let you get back to it. And I know you have a lot of sleep to catch up on, specifically, you know, before your game today. So be sure to check out that game tonight over at 8 EST. Uh, hopefully oh. we can get it streamed. Uh, and now's the time for any sort of plugs that you might have. Um, uh, what do you got going on in your life? We're trying to get to playoffs, so then Tranko can send us $5 to buy ice cream. Mm -hmm. That's like, I think that's our motivation. Yeah. Just for that $5 to get ice cream. We're broke boys here. Okay. Fair enough. Are you aware that the first Tuesday of every month, Ben & Jerry's gives out a free cone of ice cream? So like you just missed your window, not sponsored by no, the way. No, I, I don't go outside like half the time. I don't have a car. Oh, <laughs> okay. Why does not happen in the UK? <laughs> and I does the UK not get free ice cream day? Do you guys I not need, get free? I ice need cream? to move. I need to move now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Free Ben and Jerry's man, I'm there. Why did you move to America, pup? Why don't you move to America? Pup, pup was this close to coming to America, but... I was this close. But unfortunately, his friend had to have a bachelor party, and he had to go out and spend his money there. In any case, I can rage uh, on Pup a little bit off screen, and thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it, and good luck to you. Thank you. Uh, All right. Trenko is a hard feeder, by the way. Okay. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> and the man's gone. Tranquil is a hard feeder, by the way. That was his plug, so I have to say it. It is what it is. Um, great. Cool. Let's get, actually, a next person in here. We have Potato Aim, or RVN, depending on how you know him, from Suya. Here's hoping he's here. If he's not, we're just going to move on. So many people have more than one name. Like, what, what's going on? Like, I mean, it's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm known as so many people. No, you're four minutes. That's it. No. Yeah. <laughs> that is but my no. corporeal form. I'm also known as the biggest weeb in OWP. That is a title I hold with pride. Um. It's not your name. Yeah. No, that's uh. No, it's not my name. I'm I'm, I'm love interest coon. That's it. And knows what's up. Um. So it shows you that potato aim is offline from Suya. So if ev if everybody wants to at him over in general, by all means, go ahead and do that. Um, and in any case, you know, um, boop, boop, boop. Let's see. Let's get actually just our next interviewer in here. Uh, payoff from Night Ops. Payoff, come on in. Oh, I just got a DM from Moose. If you need a last second replacement for payoff, I can be there. I didn't realize he missed it. He missed it? Is he not here? <laughs> I hope everyone's having a fun time this Sunday. Yeah. Um always fun on a Sunday. Everybody's hungover, or at least if you're not, then you should be. Right. That's no, that's 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 wrong. I should no plugging for for, for alcoholism. That's not good. Do not drink, guys. Do not drink, kids. It's not cool. 
All right. I'm You're hungover? I'm always hungover. All righty. Well, I'm just going to at pay off a bunch of times. And if he doesn't respond, then I'm just going to grab my Justin Moose in here again. All right, you know what? I'm just dragging him in here. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Moose, are you there? Yes, I am here. Oh, my goodness. All righty. Pog champ. Pog champ. Um, I'm just going to get all the titles not terrible. <laughs> it's fine. I pay off. Uh, you know what? We're going to roll with it. We're going to roll with it. Payoff, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you. I'm good. 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 How are I'm, you guys? I'm glad I'm glad to hear that you're good. Um, but Moose, you know, hey, I, I, I wanted to ask uh first of all, welcome. Second of all, and this might come as a surprise to some people, happy birthday. It's not my Yay. birthday. Anymore. When is when when is your birthday? Oh. He, he told me he was singing you happy birthday on stream. Yeah, I know. He told me that he was going to lie to everybody yesterday. My birthday is July 13th. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, we got baited. I'm never, I'm, I'm never having him on the podcast ever again. July 13th is this Thursday, the same day as the 05 Heads LBLO game. And just for that, I hope 05 Heads wins. We're not in July yet, just for the record. Oh, this, I thought, I thought, I thought June 13th. Um... Well, you know, happy one month early birthday anyway. Do you have any fun plans? Do, um, you, do you know how you want to celebrate it? Is it like the big 1 8? How old are you turning? 21. 21? 21? Yeah. That is a big one. Yeah, it's a it big is. one for the Americans and in, uh, in, in the UK. It's just known as just another Tuesday. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a big drinker? Um, it's, it's legal to drink over there. I, uh, I go on and off with it, so. Okay. Yeah, it'll definitely be like a lot of drinking though on my birthday. Hey, that'll be fun. Are all of us invited? Uh, if you can make it to New York, absolutely. Oh my goodness, New York OWP meetup. Let's so go. Funny. That'll sound like a fun time. I I wanted to ask about, well, before Payoff requested to be on the show, there was this big ethos of, I'm the best main tank in the league. We're going to be the ones to totally stomp over MC this next week. And then yesterday happened. Now, could you walk through sort of what the mentality was going in and how that sort of evolved over the course of the game? Yeah, so going in, um, I think for me personally, I, again, wasn't really paying that much attention to the other team. I was paying more attention to our team, trying mm -hmm. to focus on what we could be doing better. And uh, from my perspective it looks like not everybody was on the same page mm -hmm. and because of that i feel like we made a lot of mistakes that mc capitalized on okay and could you could you run us through sort of what one of those would be the mistakes sure um we play very split um we wouldn't all go the same direction at times when we should be we would give up high ground in certain situations where we should not mm -hmm. and we would take advantage of their mistakes. Now, I, I want to ask, I feel like a lot of the battles came down to, and Puppy and I were both there, um, a lot of the battles came down to this, like, Zen Goats versus Sombra Goats matchup, and it really felt like Herbs on MC wasn't being as well contested or wasn't being uh, focused on until sort of, like, the later half of that match. Was there a bit of a reluctance of putting you on the Sombra because you're known as the Sombra specialist over in Night Ops. Yeah, so um, I think we went into it with Split amongst the team. We weren't quite sure as to what we wanted to run in that match. So mm -hmm. a lot of us wanted to run Standard Goats because we need to work on it more. And a lot of us wanted to run Sombra Goats because we thought it was our best comp. Mm -hmm. And we ended up somewhere in the middle where we'd swap back and forth a little bit. And I don't think it was good overall. I think we should have gone with one thing with uh, the purpose of either improving or staying and being the best team that we could. Right. And and I wanted to say that it, that I, I, I felt like, and, and I rewatched the VOD, I felt, like, I felt like your Hollywood game felt very strong. Um, Blizzard World? Forgive me. Did I say Hollywood? I'm totally meant Blizzard World. Blizzard World. Your Blizzard yeah. World game felt really strong. What what do you think changed? Um, 
I don't really know. I think, if I'm honest, I think internally our Blizzard World game, it was closest, but I don't think that it was... I don't think that we were playing very well in it. Hmm. Um, I think that maybe they weren't quite as warmed up, and I, I don't think we were either. Mm -hmm. But I definitely think that as we went on, towards the end of the night, we kind of uh, fell apart more. Mm -hmm. But we... I don't think that our Blizzard World game is strong at all, to be honest. Okay. How were the comms like? Just like throughout the entire throughout the entire games, like was it um, what really was it the well oiled machine that a lot of us are used to? Or no, uh, it wasn't. It hasn't been for a lot of the season. Um, I think that it's better than like most people would say. I think that if people listened in on our comms, they'd be impressed. But I don't think that it lives up to what we expect of ourselves. Mm. And so when things get quiet and do a team fight a little bit because everybody's focusing on whatever and uh, targets kind of fall apart a little bit right. that to us is it's not like a mediocre comps it's unacceptable you and, can see that but yeah, i mean hey like so. holding yourself that really high level of standard is what's led to night ops to a second spot birth although are we still uh you know i be uh i believe so um but you know at this rate i think it's uh I think, you know, whether you're second or whether you're third, I think it's very likely that you're going to be battling seven sins uh, in the playoffs. If things keep going sort of the way they are, which is probably a little frustrating because that's your week seven opponent. You haven't, uh, yeah, you haven't played is. them yet. So can I ask how you guys are prepping for them? Uh, we're working on ourselves. We, we don't, we haven't really been, like, I mean, obviously we know their players. We know which of them we think are stronger and weaker and what we can take advantage of. But mm -hmm. the reality is we're going to go into that playing our best and um, working on things to make sure that we're at our best mm -hmm. and we're not going to be trying to run anything special okay um, like take advantage of them basically yeah okay well huh you know i felt like we've just had you on so i think going through the regular routine of questions would be a little bit you know belaboring the point so i'm just going to ask you this question what do you think about your most recent opponent, MC, currently. Like, do you think um, that they have what it takes to, to take it all? Do you think they have what it takes to beat up O5 heads in so finals, semifinals? That they get seed, but yeah. I don't think that it's I don't think it's guaranteed that they're fourth seed. I think that actually, um, assuming they can win their last match, that they'll be in third or second seed. Or uh, third seed, actually. Um, I could be wrong about that, but because they yeah. won their 4 and 2, Night Ops is 4 and 2. Mm -hmm. um, so if we lose the seventh and seventh and we'll have second seed and mercury cougars will have third seed oh, um, you know what seventh, then mercury cougars i think because of differential mm. at that point i'll have to re-look at a <laughs> look at the chart but sure you know yeah, yeah sure let's go with that so there's so you're saying there's a possibility that in which case the current third seed which is seven sins would be battling oh five heads that, instead I, I think that there is I think it's potential for. I think everyone has potential to be battling O5 heads in the other top four right now. Mm -hmm. I don't think that there's a chance for anyone other than the top four right now to make it to playoffs, though. That's true. Um, and so, besides besides the obvious, you know, okay. like this assuming is... assuming that MC is going to play against O5 heads, though, I think that. Um, they have a lot to work on. We haven't played 05 since the beginning of the season, mm -hmm. but I definitely think that it's possible. Um, I think that 05 Heads is really strong, but I feel like there are definitely things that you can kind of... Mm -hmm. it, it, you, you can do things to nullify a lot of their gameplay, I feel like. Okay. Yeah. It's not easy, though. No, and no. It'll be, it'll be a challenge. <laughs> yeah. And... Well, I, I I guess my last question is seven sins next week. Can I ask who you think is the biggest threat on that team right now? Um, can you read me everybody on their team real quick? Absolutely. Give me a second. Mm -mm -mm. Actually, now I have it up. Pulling um, up the roster document. Uh, yeah, go ahead. I think that we really have to shut down Tranquil if he's in. Tranquil. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think that giving us an edge in the tank battle will kind of lead to our victory more than anything else. Okay. Tranquil. You were called a feeder before. Night Ops is hoping that's true. 
<laughs> and uh, hey, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully for Moose, Night Ops can perhaps regain their footing after a very close loss against MC31. Um, battling Seven Sins next week. Moose, thanks so much for being here. And I guess now is the time for any sort of plugs. Um, you know, anything like that. Hit us with it. You know, same as a. Uh, I don't think it was. Yeah, yeah, same as last time. Uh, definitely 100% Minecraft server. Go play Minecraft. <laughs> Go play <laughs> Minecraft. Also, special, special one to uh, Rush from MC for being an aim god on Zen. And oh my goodness, shutting he me was. Down across multiple heroes on multiple maps. <laughs> <laughs> that's our uh that's our rush for you and you know i i have like a default plug for anything uh night ops and that's check out sir twiggle's twitch stream yeah of course twitch.tv slash is it sir twiggle one or is it just sir twiggle um i can check right now i think it's just sir twiggle okay someone link it it's not gonna yeah. be me. <laughs> yeah it's just slash sir twiggle i'll link it right great. now great 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 sir twiggle over in the twitch chat um moose thanks so much for being here i really appreciate like the last minute clutch payoff did sleep in don't do that yeah. don't do that if you have a commitment what are you doing shame we're out here everybody. waking up if you if you're talking to him anywhere just shave him like you didn't make it on time for the podcast what the fuck yeah this is this is a big honor first of all <laughs> Moose, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, bye. Bye. What a lad. What a lad. That was Moose from Night Ops. Be sure to check out twitch.tv slash Sir Twiggle. Um, gosh, I am now getting super self-conscious. This has been such a scuffed stream, and it is all my fault. Oh my goodness. We, we, we just do whatever we can. We just by. do whatever it's, we it's, can. This this is this is a chilled Sunday, you know. We're just taking it steady. <laughs> taking it steady. Well especially for me. We do have one of my favorite segments coming up, and that is um, an interview with the O5 Heads coach, Hash This. I've been really, really excited to interview Hash for a while now, uh, as well as as well as a breakdown of the Seven Sins Academy, Night Ops Academy game. So, hey, let's make that happen. Hash, come on in. Hello? Uh, test, test. We can hear you loud and clear, Hash. Welcome to the show. Thank you. How are you? How's, how's, how's this past weekend been for you? It's been pretty good. Uh, we had some... Yeah, it's been pretty good. Yeah? I mean, I, I feel like I'd be flying high after a recent win as well. Yes. Uh, it feels <laughs> good to be 5-0 and instead of 0-5. Yeah, and, 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 that's where, and, and that's where the name 5 heads came from, right? Yep. We, uh, the first season I joined as coach, we went 0-5. Mm -hmm. The next season, we went uh, two and three, with our only wins being forfeits by the other team. Mm -hmm. uh, so before the season, we hadn't won a match. Okay. And then here you are, coming in the third season under the 05 Heads name, and doing something that a lot of people didn't expect. And that is systematically dismantling every other team in OWP. How does it feel being on top of the game right now? It feels good. Uh, I think although we've shown that we're good, I don't think we're above being beaten. If mm -hmm. we do not keep up with the game, we're going to lose. And I think our players are very aware with that. So we continue to work hard mm -hmm. uh, in the hope that we can turn our hopefully 7-0 into a hopefully 9-0. But that's up for the future. And if we slack off, that won't happen. Wow, that's, that's a very admirable sort of mentality to have. I... I wanted to ask, you know, as someone, or as a team that's now kind of cemented their name as one of the core OWP teams, what do you think is your secret? Honestly, I don't think we have a secret. I mean, as a coach, I really uh, exercise or uh, really preach fundamentals. Mm -hmm. So positioning, target focus, uh, and good calling. Mm -hmm. uh, as, and that's, I think, kind of our secret. I mean, this did not happen overnight. I mean, you can talk to the players too, but we've been getting better gradually for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there's no secret to us. And people might say it's Sombra Goats, and I think Sombra Goats is gaining popularity. But if you really break down why we're winning the fights that we're winning, we're winning because our fundamentals are better. Mm. And, and, and by fundamentals, is it like the basic three mechanics positioning game sense, or...? Is there something uh, else that people are missing? 
uh, cooldown, uh, cooldown management, mm -hmm. uh, positioning, and target focus. That's kind of how I define the three. Uh, goats, I mean, isn't too mechanically, but it's kind of like fixed. We're mm -hmm. all relatively the same SR, so we all have relatively similar mechanics. Mm -hmm. And it, that just, I don't really consider that a factor. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Now, I wanted to ask, you know, I feel like the playoff spot specifically for 05 has been locked in at number one seed. Can I ask, you know, with all the other teams between Seven Sins, Night Ops, and MC kind of all shuffling for playoff spots, which team you're most excited to face and which team you might be least excited to face here in playoffs? Uh, we've uh, we've played all three of them before. Mm -hmm. uh, we 4 0'd uh, Mercury Cougars and 3 1 Night Ops and Seven Sins. So the Night Ops one, the one map we lost, we played 5v6. So you can take that with a gran grain of salt. Wait, um, you guys won against Night Ops 5v6? No, three. We had uh, six players for the first three maps, mm -hmm. and then the fourth map it was Mother's Day, and oh, uh, I see, go. I see, uh, I see, I see. Uh, so we played the last map, uh, five players, and did not do very well that map. <laughs> no, no, fair enough. Real quick, Moshi, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. I, I think uh, I, I think we're fine facing all of them, uh, but as I said, if we slack off a game, I think we can lose to any of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I can see that. Um, not you losing, but I can see sort of where the attitude's coming from. And I, I wanted to focus a little bit on you. How did you get involved in OWP? So uh, I saw a Reddit post a while ago, uh, and I con uh, entered the server. I talked to, I think it was Cher or Lua. I, mm -hmm. I forget who. Uh, and I did the VOD review uh, application, and they accepted me, and they got me assigned to 05 heads. And uh so some of the players that we have now are were there when i started uh reader soup uh reader and soup uh, were the only two and then we shortly brought on richie mm -hmm. uh he was the, our other coach greasy who's done quite a bit for the team as well uh, richie's greasy's friend mm -hmm. and then uh uh x is soup's friend and then uh hobbs and eagles are uh i i know i know them around uh they've i played on a team for a while and they were they've subbed for my team They're, they've been our opponents for a while so i i knew them and i brought them on and wow okay so there's a lot of pre-existing synergy there that i feel like a lot of people know these other people and everyone was really willing to make this work yes i, I think our strongest asset is our players we have six dedicated players who are willing to put an effort to get better and i think it really shows and we're willing to suffer hardships i mean we 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 lose we're good at losing we take <laughs> losses well uh and i think that really uh, has helped us improve i can see that not you losing the attitude behind it <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. i will say it's easier to have the attitude as a coach when i'm not actively in in game getting emotional yeah but yeah. I, I think our, our players do a very good job with their attitude and i think it really helps and i think that even if we go down maps, uh, we should have no problem recovering, taking it in stride. And so what I'm hearing is that... Oh, forgive me, Puppy, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, 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 I was just saying that's a real testament to their character. It's, uh, it's, it's really, really good to see that. That's Because um, you don't see that a lot in Overwatch. And when you do, you should definitely commend it where it needs to be. So what I'm hearing is that there are even times where the O5 heads players get frustrated and they get upset and down on themselves. Not really. They're okay. good at they're not happening, uh, and that's good. Uh, they might feel bad in the moment, but they never get upset. They're, they're mm -hmm. always productive. Uh, we, we really don't have any tilt, which is really good. Wow. that's. I feel like not a lot of teams can really say that. I guess besides Seven Sins, they're just, a, they're, they're just this beacon of positivity all the time. <laughs> How have you liked it here in OWP so far? I really enjoyed it. Uh, I really like being a coach. I think it really fits how I like the game, and I I really like the goats meta. I know that's unpopular, but the goats has a lot of. It's a very consistent comp. You don't have the flashy plays of Widow, which you're playing all the well, uh, really well. Then all of a sudden, Widow gets three kills out of the blue. Like right. that just doesn't happen. So you can really analyze it really well as a coach, and really look to improve as a coach. And 
you can continue to scrim higher and higher SR teams mm -hmm. uh, because of GOATS uh, is consistently in the dive meta at a certain point the Zen, the, your Zen got one clipped by Tracer consistently, or Widow just soloed your entire team, and you just really couldn't compete, and you don't see that in the GOATS meta. So GOATS is very much like the great SR equalizer, like even this like gold team with like some really solid communication could beat this like maybe diamond, you know, like disheveled team, but if they're both playing GOATS in many ways. I, I think it could happen. I'm yeah. not saying it's likely to happen. Sure. Uh, at, SR, if you play enough, is a pretty good indicator of your skill. And unless your your team pl you playing in a team is so much better than you playing by yourself, uh, then there's not going to be a much disparity between uh, your SR and your mm -hmm. team's SR. I see. Yeah, I could see that. What what advice would you give to people wanting to join OWP? Or who wanted to really want to take the jump into playing in this sort of organized team environment, but might not, or have some reservations about it? I, I think the only thing you need to bring in is a willingness to learn. And I think this, if you're a coach too, I think it's really important as a coach to recognize that you're there to learn too, and mm -hmm. you can be wrong. And it's important for you to acknowledge when you're wrong uh, and correct yourself. I know that I've been i've given bad advice before and i always tr I admit it i always try and admit it and post in our discord uh the actual one and i think that my leadership from the top helps that uh, helps mm -hmm. my team also do the same but really willingness to learn and i think you should know that it's a lot of fun to play in a team environment has there ever been a point in time where you've had to turn someone away wanting to try out because they didn't have that unwillingness or because mm -hmm. they were not a good fit for the team like how did those conversations then go uh there was one player we had who we had to end up removing from the team mm -hmm. due to some poor attitude but since a lot of our players we've gotten because they are friends of somebody and they uh we know them personally uh we really have not had too many issues hmm and I guess my last question, before we, you know, before you're going to help us really dissect the Sevensons uh, Academy vs. Adams Academy game, is tell us a little bit about O5 Heads. Who are they? Like, as people, as players, um, and what's something that everyone's looking forward to do in the future? Uh, so, I think the first thing is they're committed to getting better. Uh, they've been committed to getting better since day one, and it really shows in their attentiveness, in their play, their ability to adapt, and they're a fun bunch group of people. Like in sure, when we're scrimming or uh, playing matches, it's serious, but we're joking around between maps. Uh, we just have a good positive attitude, and I think that pairs really well. If you're serious all the time, maybe people aren't having fun, and if they're not having fun, they might be not be learning so much. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, I think we're all kind of we're all kind of busy most yeah. of the time so we don't play a, uh some of us don't play a ton outside of uh scrims and a little bit of competitive uh mm -hmm. but that's just life yeah i can see that not you not having a life but being able to play in scrims <laughs> <laughs> And well, um, you also have a couple quips for us, helping us dissect this Seven Sins Academy versus Night Ops Academy game. Let's get those in here. So, a bit of a, just a bit of a clarification. I asked Hash this to say, hey, you know, we have this Seven Sins Academy, Night Ops Academy game, um, and I'm going to need your help understanding some of the key plays and really, really breaking it down. So. That's uh, that's another reason why Hash is here. So, hey, everyone listen up. It's school time. <laughs> okay, can uh, is my uh, screen displayed? Uh, yep, your screen is displayed. You are good to go. Okay, so first, uh, let's talk a little bit about the compositions. Uh, so you have... The interesting point of this composition is you have Anna and you... Oh my goodness, uh, something uh, happened. Hi, RVN. Bye, RVN. All right. <laughs> Uh, All right, we're have, good. Okay, on the Night Ops Academy side, you have Anna and you have Sombra. So that that pretty drastically alters uh, how Night Ops wants to play versus how Seven. 
Captains wants to play. So first of all, uh, having having the Sombra uh, means that Night Ops wants to play slow. If they just try and brawl it out, they're going to lose because they have a Sombra and Seven Sins mm -hmm. has a debuff. Uh, so that's important. And the other thing, uh, the way that Anna affects it is uh, you would think that the extra sustain of Anna would make you want to fight longer with Anna uh, versus Zen, but it's actually the opposite. Anna is very explosive in her cooldowns uh, as well as her healing. While Zen, what Zen does is it gives your team 25% extra damage if your target focus is good, uh, as well as a much better ult than Anna. So if uh, Night Ops tries to play the long game against Seven Sins, you're just going to lose, as Night Ops does more damage to them, has better ults, etc. So that means mm -hmm. that Night Ops wants to play slow, build EMP, and then play explosively. Uh, yeah. Um, so let's get into the clip once we kind of understand the uh, wind conditions. So, uh, let's try that again. The Windows bar does not want to be going down. Okay, there. So right now, uh, they're on uh, seven is, is on high ground, and you can see the Lucio right there. So okay, so they get booted. Let's talk about this boop for a moment. So, at first glance, this boop seems like good. It boops them down off high ground. This boop is actually not good. This is a bad boop uh, by uh, Dr. White. Because what Seven Sins want to do is they want to get on point and brawl. And by booping them down, you're pushing them onto point so that they can brawl. So you're, so you're, you're making uh, Seven Sins do what they want to do anyways. Uh, so now, okay, so now let's talk about the rest of this fight. Um, oh, also, one other thing. It's important to understand that Overwatch is not a game about fights. It's a game about the clock. Uh, as a def you want to minimize the amount of uh, time Seven Sins has capturing objectives, pushing cart, etc. Mm -hmm. So, so that they end up with, so that finally the clock gets to zero, and you can stop them once and for all. So if uh, Seven Sins is just standing on high ground doing nothing, that's a victory for Night Ops. Mm -hmm. I they see. don't need to take a fight here, and by booping them, they force them to take a fight. So this boop is actually good for Seven Sins. Okay, so now let's talk here. Uh, this bubble is early. Uh, from So the way I do VOD reviews, I focus a lot on the small things, and I take a while. So I'm sorry in advance, but... This is important. It's, a, it's okay, dude. This is all you. <laughs> we we have four more clips after this, by the way. <laughs> yes, I'm aware. I have notes too. Let's okay. go. So, uh, this bubble. So, a couple things about this bubble. There's again, there's no reason that NetUp should engage. What they should be doing is they should be holding this corner or holding some kind of corner, and they should just be forcing seven sins to take as much time to get to them as possible and in that time sombra is farming emp seven sins is using cooldowns etc and uh they're taking damage and since they aren't playing an ana they might not heal the damage up as well uh so this engagement is wrong uh next this bubble so the engagement basically hasn't started yet uh there's no reason to bubble here i think if we were to watch the clip back we would discover that the bubble was applied even earlier I'm just gonna have to view it like this, I think. Sure. Okay. So right here, uh, next status. So at the moment, the resources Seven Sins has is everything. I'm pretty sure they have armor pack. I'm not sure, but they definitely have bubble. Mm -hmm. uh, while Night Ops has no bubble, they have no DM uh, because they don't have a diva. Uh, I'm not sure about Nade. Uh, uh, and they probably they probably have amp and nade. Actually, I know they have amp, uh, amp and nade because I've seen these clips before. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so at this moment, night uh, seven sins sorry should be pushing in because they're at a resource advantage. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, and and that's exactly what they do, right? As soon as they get booped off. Uh, well, they push in a little bit. Let's see what they do now. I'm not. Uh, okay. Uh, so right at this point. I think in a higher high level Overwatch game, the fight has been won by Seven Sins. They're at resource advantage, uh, and they can just push on in WM1. And I think that's basically what they do. It's not okay. 
So they brawl Reinhardt, get stunned. Okay, so if we watch that back, uh, I don't. Let's see if we can see it. But what happens is Stevs misses bubble onto Rhine, and Rhine gets stunned. So Rhine should be dead here. If if Stevs had bubbled Rua, Rhine would be dead right now. Uh, Rhine got stunned as well as so missed two swings. Rua's at about 200 health. Mm -hmm. Probably would be dead. Uh, I know this is really nitpicky for whoever is watching this, but as Zarya, you have to hit your bubbles. Uh, it is how you take space in a GOAT's engagement. So if you do not hit your bubbles, you cannot take space. And by hit your bubbles, do you mean time your bubbles to get the most damage as as possible? Yeah. Or just like make sure your bubbles get on the right target or both? You have to, you have to both. Uh, you have it both. Here, bubble goes on Brig. Uh, let's see if we can find that. Yeah, you could just see it right there. Bubble just went on Brig, and then they get the anti off. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see that right here. Sorry for the quality. Uh, you can see that Rua uh, is stunned right now. He wouldn't have been stunned if the bubble had uh, had actually hit him. And Ryan is Discord. There's no reason Ryan. I mean, Ryan does end up dying, but these are the kinds of things that are going to make you a better player if you can do them better and more consistently. Right. I, I always tell my teammates, do not train, do not uh, train to beat opponents that are worse than you. Train to beat the opponents that are better than you. And sure, it works out, but that doesn't matter. And you just have clean up. Um, so it's that micro play of bubble management and timing that led to to Sevenson still winning that fight and taking Hollywood A. Uh, it was Night Ops, yeah, so it was Night Ops' poor use of cooldowns and poor use of how they engaged. Uh, so the, Night Ops loses because they mismanage their resources. They don't play around cover, they use Bubble too early. When Bubble expires, uh, Seven Sins with the superior Brawl Comp just pushes onto Ryan and he dies, and the anti doesn't matter. And so if, if you were in charge of Night Ops right now, and you know, we were playing this game over again, would you advise just have them stay on high ground and then as soon, and basically much like how GOATS functions, have Seven Sins come to them? Yes, I think Seven Sins should be coming to them as opposed to Night Ops. High ground is good. This position is good. This position is okay. Anything but here, honestly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, it's really important to use cover so that when the fight doesn't because you're not going to win every fight, you're not going to win every engagement. The other team could be better, or you could miss something, or who knows what's going to happen. That ju You're just not going to come out on top on every engagement. So if you're in cover, it's a lot easier for you to retreat. Uh, and if like Zen's on, if the enemy Zen's on high ground here, he can't kill people over here. Uh, I could use a different color. If, if Seven Sins Academy Zen is here, and... Uh, uh, Rua would were to retreat right there. That's out of line of sight. They have to push really far uh, to get to that, and then you and then Night Ops might be able to capitalize. Right. Okay. Uh, All right. And then they were able to clean up and take Hollywood A. That seemed pretty clear cut. Mm hmm. Uh, this is actually a very excellent clip uh, that shows kind of how a brawl. Uh, that Seven Citizens Academy should play against Night Ops Academy. They, they, I, they were forced to go uh, onto low ground because of the boop. But, mm -hmm. but if you, they could have just made that rotation themselves. Did I mention that I found all these clips? So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, yes. puppy. Anything Let's to add? To... Just real quick. Sorry. Oh, you, you said me, sorry. Yeah, I said, hey, just anything to add? I mean, Hash, this did a wonderful no, job no, just think, breaking think, this down. I think you did a wonderful job breaking that down, honestly. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I I hadn't even thought of, so yeah, definitely thank you for that. Um, I'm intrigued to find to know whether or not if that initial bubble, in your opinion, if that initial bubble that was on the uh, Night Ops Rhyme had been a little bit better timed, uh, considering the position they were in, every, everything still runs the same way, how, how, how do you see that playing out? Do you see it playing out any differently if they so if, if they use their bubbles a little bit more effectively there? So yes, I do think it 
would have played out differently, but I think the only re I think there's a chance they could have won because Night Ops actually put their bubble on Ryan, while mm -hmm. uh, Stevs misses his bubble on Rua, uh, mm -hmm. so Night Ops can better push into them. Mm -hmm. um, there's no way of knowing for sure. I can tell you for sure though that the missed bubble uh, and the f positioning with uh, Night Ops is in the open cost of dead in the fight. Right. Yeah, Cause... it's more positioning than anything. And I can I can 100% see that. Because I mean, you look at like the Sombra on Night Ops Academy and he's already at 60%. All they have to do is buy another, you know, maybe 20, 30 seconds of, of time and they've got an EMP for the fight and that's game over. Well, not game over, but fight over for, for, for seven sins. Yeah, and even if they don't buy, if they buy the, the 20 seconds, or if they buy like 15 seconds or 10 seconds and they end up losing the fight, now Sombra's at 90% to EMP instead of 60% to EMP, and now uh, Night Ops can win the next fight. I mean, right. O5 Heads is known for their Sombra Goats play, so I've coached Sombra Goats quite a bit, but you have to you have to play to use your Sombra. You really have to try and maximize her value if you're going to do, uh, if you're going to do well. And I think as teams start to play more of the Sombra Goats in Mirror, because they realize that Sombra Goats is easier to play than regular Goats, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, the battle of which Sombra, uh, which team is playing around their Sombra better is really going to matter. That makes a lot of sense. I do want to be the bad guy here and say, hey, we do have some more clips that we have to see. <laughs> yes. Okay, so the next clip, uh, Night Ops to spawn. Okay, so... Okay. Okay. Okay, so this clip is also really interesting. So really nice job uh picking uh out this clip. Thanks. So <laughs> <laughs> uh always compliment the, the host if you want to get back on. Like <laughs> <laughs> Uh okay, so uh right at this moment, uh Lucio is dead and Zarya is dead. And then for Night Ops, uh, Brig is dead. Uh, so Night Ops should push them. They can push them because uh, Seven Sins does not have a Lucio. Uh, and this this clip is really about uh, alt management. And I think I'm gonna have some opinions that might people might disagree with here. Um, also, I think of note, Night Ops is playing that Ana again instead of the Zen, so they want to play explosively, but I, it's not really relevant in this clip. So, I would say right here, Night Ops is just playing too passively. They're up two players, and they're up a Lucio, so they should be pushing. So, okay, a couple things of note. Uh, Seven Sins Academy, now they're in blue, so that's confusing. Yeah, it um, is. <laughs> uh, they, they don't retreat. They don't respect the push, so they go this way uh, instead of this way. I don't think if, uh, if NetOps Academy has been very good about pushing, pushing them, I don't think they could have escaped anyways. And then this grab happens. Uh, so... Um, I really like this grab. So, so uh, first thing to note is, remember, this is a clock game, not a, a fight game. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and control, I, I always tell my players, first fight is really important on control because the way control usually goes, team wins first fight, they have alts. Second fall, fight, they use some of those alts uh, and, they, and they win it. So now they're, they're probably at 40%. 40%. Third mm -hmm. fight, both teams have alts. But uh, the team that lost first fight should have more, so they may or may not win it. It's it's a toss up. Fourth mm -hmm. fight, team uh, uh, the team that lost first fight finally gets a, basically a guaranteed fight win. But now the team that won the first fight will, uh, has alts, and the team that lost the first fight doesn't. So what ends up happening is oftentimes uh, uh, the team that wins first fight wins four out of six fights, or fi uh, uh, about. Uh, and then they clutch control. So it's really important to win first fight. And this looks like a first fight despite Seven Sins getting some percentage. I think they probably capped point, seven, uh, Night Ops retreated, and then they did their thing mm -hmm. and got point back. Uh, so what this grab does uh, is it kills two. It doesn't really look like Night Ops uh, can build their ults because they already have the, uh, their right. ults. 
Uh, but uh, they kill two, sta uh, and this is like a 10 second stagger. So this, by the time uh, seven sins can engage once more, it's probably up to 40, 40, 50%. So that's massive. This is so free. Uh, and, but it gets better than that for night hops. So now, uh, uh, seven sins transits. This is just worth it on its own because you, uh, Ryan could charge Brig and kill Brig, and the effect would be the same. Uh, well, actually, mm, it would be a five v five at that point without Briggs because uh, Major Scott is still coming back from spawn. But, uh, but they get the anti off too, so they get the kill too. They get Shatter out, which also a bad Shatter. So at this point, they traded Grab for Shatter and Trance and killed two. Which is a good trade on its own, an incredible trade on its own. Incredible trade, and on top of that, they just guaranteed themselves 20-30%. Okay, and now, okay, and now there's, they should be pushing. They're five players against four, they should be pushing. So, and they push. Kill Lucio, really good. So now they shatter. I like this shatter, same reason. They kill three, they deny Zarya all the charge. Uh, if they actually kill Zarya, which they don't, spoiler. Uh, they kill three, and they probably are going to end up with 60-70% uh, with this stagger. However, there's one small problem. They charge. And that knocks Zarya into spawn. Uh, so Zarya comes out uh, with her charge, which isn't the end of the deal and then they should stagger baby diva so what should have happened with sh they, their shatter they should have uh dmac diva killed zarya and uh killed zen and then they should have retreated so this shatter essentially bought them probably 20 more percent because it takes 10 seconds to respawn by the time they get back to point it's going to take another 10 seconds mm -hmm. or maybe it's about 20 30 percent so worth it um and then the I think they retreat now, which is good because uh, they're down their break, and they don't need to keep them here. In fact, they don't want to keep them there because uh, they can stall out point for longer if they fight on point. Yeah, and that's that's the end of the clip. Uh, so th so this uh. So this has a couple lessons for us. Uh, first of all, it's worth it can be, it's on control especially it's worth it to use alts to get stagger kills mm -hmm. so that you rack up your extra percentage because this is a percentage game not it's a, I can't say this enough. This is not about winning fights. It's a, if you can win a fight, if you can get time without winning a fight, that's perfect. Um, and then the other thing is recognize when the fight is lost for uh, seven sins. They just grabbed. Okay, cool. You got out grab. Now you don't have to worry about a grab. Sure, you lost some percentage, but trance isn't going to change anything. Mm -hmm. uh, if you if you look at, if we go back to where trance is used. Okay, so look where. The, the, here is Zarya. Here is Lucio. Here is Diva. Uh, even by the time trance ends, if they didn't get this anti, they would still be fighting down. Right, uh, they'd, they'd still have, like, a high likelihood of taking on a 2v4, which is not good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not easy to do. I, I, I think knowing when it's appropriate to ult and when it's appropriate to not, not ult is one of the hardest things in Overwatch. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 will always, I always tell my players uh, it is better to over ult than under ult. Uh, but I think... There's this element when you know the fight is lost, that's probably one of the easier times to know to not to ult. Mm hmm Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Oh. Um, I, just need I, to have, I have nothing possible I could have added that. That was such an incredible dissection. Thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Okay. So... Um... Let's talk about so. Let's talk about uh, so. Night Ops is in control of the point right now, and they this is the same map. They are kind of pushed up far away. Let's talk about what Night Ops's goal is. Uh, Night Ops Academy goal is to get this to eighty five percent. If this gets to eighty five, eighty five percent is kind of the magic number. If it's eighty five percent or higher, uh, 
that's la if you win one fight, it's over. So what Night Ops, what, what Night Ops should be doing here is they should play really slow, uh, uh, lose the fight when they have 85% or more, and get alts out from 7 sins, and then when it comes time for next fight, they should they have alts, 7 sins doesn't, and they win, and then map's over. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about a little bit about Anna Goats versus Zen Goats already. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of there's a good amount of interesting micro in this fight as well. I, I'll just say that micro is more important than macro. If your team can go win the 6v6, most of the time you're going to win the match, whether or not your macro is good. Mm -hmm. So these things are important to recognize, but when you're doing VOD reviews, making sure your bubbles are good, making sure your positioning is good, all of that should come first. Right. So, so they retreat. Uh, good. Okay. Um, I'm just making sure. Okay. So uh, this bubble is. So this bubble. Uh, you can see personal bubbles coming up for Naomi. This is a good personal bubble. Uh, it covers the team's retreat as well as gets you a lot of charge. Good. Um, okay. This grab. This is not even a sneaky DM. Uh, unlucky though. <laughs> uh, you can see that grab was just used by the zero uh, percent mark. But whatever, crap happens. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Now uh, you can see that B is just about to get used. Uh, uh, this is this is probably Night Ops's biggest mistake here. First of all. Uh, if we go, uh, they are down alts. So Seven Sins has five alts. Night Ops has four. Mm -hmm. So if Night Ops just holds their uh, holds their alt stalls point, they can come back with alts. They don't need to win this fight. In fact, they only want to win this fight if it doesn't cost them anything, or after Seven Sins has used all their resources and gets nothing. Uh, I'm not saying throw this fight, but I'm just saying keep it in the back of the uh, your mind that you don't need to be the proactive. Excuse me, the proactive member in this fight. Um, so this beat is bad for a couple reasons. First of all, there is nobody at low health. Okay, Diva is like 400 HP, but that doesn't matter because Diva can fly and Diva's Diva. Um, uh, second of all, uh, your team is retreating. So what you, the goal for this beat would be like a tempo beat. So you were to push in with beat, mm -hmm. but. Your team is retreating, so that shift from uh, defensive stance to attacking stance is going to take like a second. And in that time, you've basically lost the entire utility of beat. Uh, because they've done some damage to it, you haven't really been able to do damage to them. So this beat could use some improvement. Um, uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so, I, so we can play this out. So they recognize the beat and they try to push in, but as you, but as we talked about, it takes some time uh, to shift a tent. And on top of that, Naomi misses bubble. Uh, so now Ryan really has a hard time pushing. Uh, Discord is not cleansed. Ryan has a hard time climbing space. He can get booped. It just, it's just hard for Ryan if he does not get bubbled. Also, I'm a Ryan main, so maybe I'm a little salt. The salt is bleeding through, <laughs> but, uh, but I, 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 I think I have some valid points. Um, uh, they don't get anything out of beat. They really cannot push. At this point, fight is over for Night Ops. They've used Grav. They've used Beat. They have Bomb. Oh, they've they're using Rally too. They have Bomb, but whatever. Bomb. Also, oh, just side note, uh, this would be a good time for Matt to Bomb probably. Like, in general. Not now. But if your Zarya gets Grav eaten, you want to throw Bomb up uh, and try and do something with it because that keeps your grab bomb if you're going for the combo in sync. Mm -hmm, right. Other, otherwise, you're just going to have to wait till Zarya builds grab again, and you've just wasted your ult, because you're going to get it up again. Right. Um, uh, but I don't think there's a good opportunity here. But at this point, Night Ops has used all their resources. Seven Sins has used Rally. That's it. Seven Sins is ba has basically won this fight at this point. Mm -hmm. So uh, Night, uh, Night Ops should... Uh, should basically call fights over. Don't invest anything else. Stall out point. Okay, they grab. This is a good grab. It guarantees a pick on Lucio and Brig. Uh, 
Sorry, you're shooting Brig. Brig's about to get discorded, I think. Yeah, Brig gets discorded. Brig gets focused. Lucio dies. Okay, at this point, uh, Seven Sins is up two, and uh, they've they they've just used grab. There's no reason for any other alt. Rua, this I think you just charged. I wasn't mm -hmm. paying attention. Um, I think he gets charged. Yeah. Okay. He he gets charged. That's that's unfortunate. Um, I don't know if Steph, what happened to Stev's bubble. Um, watch for that. Okay. It's not. I'm pretty sure Stev still has bubble. So this shatters unnecessary. But I'm gonna just say again, it's better to overall than underall. It's hard to have the relevant information in game. So I, 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 will, I, say, I say the shatter is unnecessary, but if uh, Rue was asking me, would I, w w should he do it again or not? The answer is yes, he should do it again because mm -hmm. he doesn't know for sure that the alt is unnecessary. They clean up, everyone's on Ryan. This is pretty good target. Everyone's on D.Va, everyone's on Zarya. Uh, okay, this is a little split. That's okay. Zarya needs to die, and Anna tries to save her. So, uh, some mistakes by Night Ops, and some pretty good play by Seven Sins Academy there. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of the um, a lot of the kind of points that you made are really interesting, as it kind of shows the kind of effects of being under pressure. Uh, the the initial kind of uh, mass alts from Night Ops was definitely down from Seven Sins sort of speeding into them and kind of uh, applying that pressure that all of a sudden they're like, oh shit, we got to do something. We got to, we got to, you know, throw out an alt. Let's try and kind of delay the point even further. Um, yes. And I think that, uh, again, when uh, the Rhine on uh, Seven Sins gets charged, again, applying that pressure, that small amount, just it forced him to kind of think, okay, I need to do something here. I'm going to use my shatter. Um, it's it's interesting to kind of see like uh, those kind of fight or fight or flight responses sort of coming out from people, and it's a it's a real true representation here of that. I think of note is that if uh, Rua, uh no no no, if M Macan doesn't shatter, it's possible he dies, and then mm -hmm. Seven Sins is up a Reinhardt. I don't mm -hmm. think that would happen. I don't know what happened uh, to Stev's bubble. It should have been applied to Reinhardt somewhere. I didn't see it. He either missed it or wasn't paying attention. Um, but I, 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 I cannot say this enough to people that it's better to overall than underall. Um, so even though in retrospect that shatter looks like a mistake, I wouldn't consider it a mistake. Um, and you talk about uh, overalting from the point of seven sins here, because obviously yes. Nightcops want to kind of be in a position where they're yes um, they're they're in control, so they want to be as as uh, e e economical with their um, their alts as possible to ensure that they they, they take the, the win really, don't they? Yes. Unless they're coming in to kind of finalize for that final push once they got to eighty five percent, and you could just toss them all in like yeah, you know, yep. nothing. Yes, uh, I'm talking yeah. about seven sins. I'm talking about the seven sins okay. shatter. Uh, to be precise, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. and I, as you were saying, uh, Pape, uh, yeah. uh, getting better and making good decisions is hard. N none of this happens mm -hmm. overnight. You're not gonna listen to somebody tell you what to do and just be able to do it next time. This takes time. This takes effort. Uh, I know as a player, it took me a long time to improve. Uh, I went from bronze to masters as a player. Wow. Um, um, and it none of it happened overnight. And if you if you want to improve, you can improve. Uh, you just have to be willing to make mistakes and start making less yeah. mistakes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, let's see. But all Next right. One. Okay. Seven cents attacks from high ground. Okay. So uh, this is also a really good clip because. Uh, hey. Thanks. <laughs> um. Both teams have things here that they re that they could have done to win it, and there's this fight doesn't have a lot of macro because this is just a pure micro fight. Neither team has any alt. It's first fight. Uh, it's really gonna determine which team capitalizes better. Uh, who wins? So, uh, so again, we're seeing the uh, the Anna Sombra, which again. Oh, hello and welcome. All right, goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye RVN.
Uh, <laughs> uh, which again means that Night Ops Academy should be playing slow. So this fight in some ways looks like Hollywood, but it plays out very different. Uh, plays out very different. Um, so let's get right into it. Okay, they're on high ground. I don't know what set, why Seven Sins is standing here. Are they waiting for Sombra or something? Maybe I will. I don't. I, I mean, Diva can be spy checking for Sombra behind, but they're just they're just skip. I mean, they only have one fight anyways. Maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just seems. I'm not sure, but it just seems a little. They're taking spam. Okay, they're pushing slowly. Lucia goes for the boop. Same comments as Hollywood. If they just stay up here for a while, that's good. I don't. Uh, Naomi, you should have when they kind of pushed in, uh, like, like this. Am I? Am I? Okay, I'm still here. Uh, you are still here. Puppy just left, and I was just doing me. Hey. How's it going, hey. me? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, n when uh, Night Ops Academy, when Seven Sins, let me use the correct color. I think that's important for people and for me. When they went up like this, uh, Naomi should have been like mirroring them mm -hmm. uh, so that she's already in position. I don't know where she is, but she's <laughs> not where she should be. And as a heads up for everyone, uh, Puppy's internet died, so he is trying his best to come back on. Unlucky and Unlucky. relatable. Uh, okay. uh, so, I mean, here are seven sins. They're just... Uh, if Naomi was in position, she probably could have gotten two EMP farm cycles off. That's like when you go in, do a bunch of damage, teleport out. Right. And uh, she could probably be at 40-50% the EMP here. It's, if you're playing Sombra, this is really important to do. And if you're playing on a team that's playing Sombra, it's really important to enable. Okay, so personal bubble is used by uh, Matt. This is bad because it doesn't accomplish anything. It's not maintaining space. The other note is Night Ops, you're just standing in the open. Why? There's no reason for you to be standing in the open. And this is a little better, but you're they're about to push forward. And again, Naomi should be like right here. Uh, just clear that. Be like right there. And as soon as they drop, force Zen down. Um, I, for for this, what you can do with your playing uh, a Sombra is if Zen sits up here on high ground alone, you could just have your Lucio wall right up here and your Sombra, and you could two v one Zen and get a pick. Okay, both bubbles are used. These are both good bubbles. Uh, Bash is used a little early. Um, but uh, right now, this is really good positioning by Seven Sins. They have three, four. So all of these people are on the same target. They have their Lucio kind of doing Lucio things. <laughs> Lucio cannot push. Lucio can't push forward here because uh, the Zen should be like somewhere here. And Lucio needs to be able to peel for Zen. Right. Uh, um, if they were not running a Sombra, Lucio could be wall riding up here and boop that way. But because there's a... Uh, if you don't... Unless you know your Zen's a fucking god. Sorry, excuse my language. Uh, unless you know your Zen's really good and can just deal with Sombra on their own, uh, Lucio needs to be in a position to peel for Zen. Someone clip it and send it to him later. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I mean, we, I both know what happened. We both know what happened. So now Brawl's kind of happening on point. Night Ops is pushed really far up for basically being down a, a player. Um, Hello and welcome wel back. Welcome again, pups. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have uh, no idea what the fuck happened there. Sorry. Uh, so, okay, at this point, both Briggs get too far up and die. So they're at they're at parity. So this is well, okay, Major Scott. It doesn't look like he's too far up, but he should be like here. There's cover right there. It's just standing in the open is not good. And sees the MO, you go for an aggressive bash on Reinhardt. It doesn't work out. Then your Ryan retreats, which you just have to be aware of because there's a flow of the fight and it's going to be hard. And then get caught out of position. Uh, so now they're both down Brig. So at this, at this moment, uh, both teams are down Brig. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Zen is hacked, and I don't know where. Uh, oh, Static Scape is with the team when he should be with Zen. Mm -hmm. um, and and and, that, and that's the Brig. Uh, no, uh, no, Static Scape is the Seven Sins Lucio. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank uh, you. Lucio, Lucio should be with Zen uh, to help protect uh, him from Sombra. You cannot just most of the time you cannot rely on your Zen headshotting Sombra and killing her. Mm -hmm. It's nice, but and you're Lucio, you can just wall ride right back. But if your right. Zen dies, no bueno. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but they have good target focus. Sombra's pressuring Zen, but I don't think uh, Mackin is discorded, which is a mis actually he can't be discorded because Zen is hacked. Uh, but but even though this one v one is going on, Mackin is still under more pressure than Rua because of goats versus Sombra goats. Um, so, okay, they retreat, which is good. So it's still even. Huge anti. This this is Night Ops' mistake. When you run Ana, this is what you can do. So Bubble could not have been saved for anti. It needed to be used in the engagement. But D.Va needs to be looking out. You should be aware of Ana. I'm not saying this is easy to D.Va players. It's real. It's actually quite difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, but you should recognize that Ana is here looking for a nade. And you should eat the nade. It's it's really important. It's really really important. Um, because what should happen right now is Night Ops should realize that oh, Ryan's antied and pretty low. We should go kill him. And uh, your Ryan is at mostly full health, and you have an Anna. What Anna allows you to have is allows you to have reach, because Anna can heal you up for that just extra amount, so you can uh, push in a little farther and kill and kill Ryan here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but they back but both teams back up. Good backup on Seven Sins, bad backup on Night Ops. Uh, uh, Campsec kills Naomi, so it's uh, Seven Sins is up a player, but they're kind of up a player anyways with Sombra, but Sombra is distracting Zen, kinda. Um, so uh, now Night Ops regroups. They are four players, Seven Sins is five. Stevs gets. Uh, Rua's low. Okay. This is. Rua, this is a throw. Um. <laughs> uh. Rua, you charge, and yes, you get booped. If we watch that carefully, okay. Uh, Stev should be uh, okay. So, uh, LT, you go into their backline to chase someone. I don't know why. That's also a questionable decision. So now Zarya is foc and Anna is focusing, you know, focused on him, and then uh, uh, Macken plays slow as he should, and Rua. Okay, so Rua, you're up one person. You have a Zen, they don't. Or uh, seven sins. You just play slow and you win this fight easy. Uh, there's an element of risk versus reward. Y uh, you should only take a risk if you you should only take as much risk as you need to take a risk. If you're gonna lose, if you do not kill, uh, pin and kill Vine, you should go and try and pin and kill Vine. And if you get booped or you die, it's whatever because you would have lost anyways. But here, seven sins should basically guarantee win this but the charge happens and that's unlucky uh, so uh, now uh, not N night ops makes a good decision to now focus Ryan as well as Mackin recognizes that he's pretty screwed he if he'd played a little slower Lucio might have booped him I'm not totally sure uh, it might have been fine but he sl plays slow he gets bubbled now uh, uh, night ops is even because remember, Brig, Brig's coming back from spawn. Uh, they're, they're even, uh, but Seven Sins doesn't have a Rhine. So between Bubble and Shield, uh, Mackin survives for a while. And then during this time, uh, they, they push on, they try and support him. I mean, look what the Shield does. Look how much damage the Shield allows him to take. Plus the Ana, Mackin survives for a long time. Uh, Okay, uh, Night, Night Ops should be killing Zen right now. That's unfortunate. I know you're focused on saving Ryan, but Zen needs to die too. Um, Mackin finally dies, but in that time, it's now a th three versus three, I think. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, because CSEMO is coming back from spawn. Uh, they, the, the, their target focus on D.Va pays off. Uh, sure, they're not. Zen could have died easier, but they were all on D.Va, so it's okay. Not ideal, but it's okay. Uh, D.Va gets the mech. Uh, Matt gets grav in that time, and then is just able to focus down, and then they clutch out fight. So. I mean, we can watch them cap, but, uh, so, uh, a couple lessons here. Remember that goats beat somber goats in brawls, so if you're somber goats, you shouldn't take a brawl if you have to. Uh, we're not seeing, we didn't see that happen here, but that was more due to poor play on the part of Seven Sins Academy. Uh, if you're playing Anna, you need, and you hit a fat nade, you need to take advantage of it, and if you're seven, if you're playing into an Anna, you need to mitigate nade. Uh, and then the other thing is you need to recognize when you're up, when you're even, and when or when you're down. And uh, take the corresponding amount of risk. If you're up, uh, take less risk. If you're down, you might need to take some big risks. Um, yeah. And, and if you're down, there. always over ult and under ult. Got it. <laughs> if you're up. <laughs> if you're up. It's just, uh, just to kind of go back to your point on the uh, the Ananade and kind of the Diva kind of being able to kind of um, recognize when she needs to be kind of looking for those uh, those nades coming in. Um, like I, I, I noticed when um, that nade came in, the Diva was on the ground actually just shooting into the shield, which um, really isn't that useful uh, for a Diva. She needs to be kind of taking these high grounds, in my opinion. Do you think it'd be more um it, more of an influence on the on the actual fight if she actually kind of went up to contest the the Anna or do you reckon he, she should have stayed uh, where she was and I think tried she to eat it from her location. Probably should have contested uh the Anna due to the Anna's poor positioning here. Mm. Uh but That's what I, thought. I think what happens is she sees the Anna and then Anna kind of retreats. Mm. Uh we can play it in a little while and then continues to chase kind of too far so you can contest anna and in this time anna is making this rotation uh, uh she's not doing anything so that's a win um and i think it's important to i'm not uh, it's important to recognize that uh beating nade is a team effort between your reinhardt your zarya uh and your diva and recognizing at a given moment who has responsibility to deal with Nate. And at this mm -hmm. specific moment, it is absolutely D.Va's responsibility to deal with Nate. Mm -hmm. Because the, uh, the Ryan and Zarya's already used her bubble, and Ryan's pressing into the enemy Ryan. Uh, so dealing with Nate could just be as simple as push pushing onto the Anna, but in other situations, it's going to have to be eating Nate. So if, uh, yeah. so if Anna was like positioned down here, pay attention to it. Uh, it has a little projectile uh, that you can see if you're really paying attention. Uh, yeah. And it also means you have to not use uh, DM as much kind of in the intermittent period to make sure it's off cooldown. That's a good so point. you reckon save, saving her matrix for when the bubbles are down? Because you yeah. can alternate those kind of abilities quite well if you're, if, if you're a very sort of savvy. Yes. Uh, also, the other thing you can do as D.Va is if the enemy Ryan is low and they're running an Anna, you can DM him and then he doesn't get heals. Mm -hmm. Which is a really yes. asshole move, but that's what Overwatch is. <laughs> <laughs> so is playing uh, goats. Yeah, uh, I don't know about no, that. No, 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 I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, you're talking about a goats lover here, come on. So, <laughs> yeah. so, so this last clip that we have, and I, I know you have notes ahead of time, but I want to ask, we're running a little short on time. Do you think we can wrap this up quickly? Yeah, I, 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 I yes. Perfect. Um, All right, hit us with the fifth. Sorry, I can be kind of lengthy. No, no, this yeah. is, I mean, hey, Sevenson's Academy. Hey, Night Ops Academy. I'll, uh, I'll take my uh, coaching commission uh, through Venmo. You can, <laughs> you can message me uh, now. Okay, so real quick. Uh, this comp, the Sevenson's Academy it's triple poke you have no way to force them out of position uh with this comp you have no tracer you have no sombra you have nothing to pressure their back line uh night ops academy or any team playing goats into triple dps you have to recognize that your win condition has changed 
Your win condition is not to fight them straight up because you are going to lose. The Pharah is going to fly into your backline, kill Zen, and then kill Brig, and then you're down two for no reason. So if you just you can just rotate contests on cart while standing in cover, and they can't do anything. That's the sum summary of this clip. And Night Ops doesn't do that, so they lose. Oh, okay. Whoa, that was really quick. I was like, are we going to see the clip? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 we, we can see, we can see the clip. Uh, yeah, I, I think practicing against triple DPS, I would say you shouldn't play triple DPS unless you're losing the goat's mirror. Um, I mean, I, I, I think it's kind of always true of off meta comps. If you're not going to win the meta mirror, why play it to a certain extent, but it's an inconsistent comp and it relies on the other team making mistakes. And it's always better to make the other team lose as opposed to wait for them to screw up so that hopefully you can win. Right. And this is sort of a, a really good example of that on how they were just unable to deal with the pharmacy and Hanzo, yes. oddly enough. <laughs> I want to ask, is Hanzo even a good option for shield break? You're not playing for shield break here, really. Mm -hmm. You're playing to force them out of position and then hit them with your Farah uh, or whatever other ranged DPS uh, you're playing. Like you can do Pile Driver plus Widow. Mm -hmm. Winston's weird, but I'm sure that's a hero pool thing, not a uh, deliberate choice. Wrecking Ball is hard. Um, y your goal is to like force force opportunities for your ranged DPS to do it. So if you like hack Diva, mm -hmm. then a lot harder for them to eat rockets or anything right uh if, if you have your tracer in the back line they turn around to deal with tracer and then you hit them with bar or ball or whatever and yeah it's yeah you're you're relying on pop-off moments which if you have to do it you have to do it right so just in closing comments here we saw a lot of clips today thank you for taking the time to really really dissect all of them and what i've learned is the game is a clock game it is not a fight game. What I've learned is it's okay to over ult and under ult if, uh, you know, if you're just a little bit up and you want to take these staggers, you want to take the point when you need to. Know your role and don't play comps you're bad at just because the meta <laughs> says so. Is that right? Yep, that's all correct. Alrighty. Once again, this was Hash This from 05 Heads. I, I think we got a bit of an inkling onto the amount of uh, coaching 05 heads gets definitely, you know, a very big contributor to their success this season. And hey, good luck to your game against Lightbringers Leftovers. Not Sunday, Thursday. This coming Thursday. Hash, thanks so much for having or thanks so much for having us. Thanks so much for being here. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. Take care and good luck. Thanks so much. Take care. Oh, wait, actually, are you are, are you still there? Yeah. All right. Actually, this is the time. If you have any plugs, this is the time to do it. Anything you want to promote? You I have, don't have any plugs. You have, uh, you, you, have, you have an audience here for you. I don't have any plugs. Uh, uh, yeah. Stream. Okay. Stream and teach people. Teach people more. Teach me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, uh, people were saying that, hey, Sevenson's Academy has no coach. Can we take you up on an offer? <laughs> go go I, hit a hash. Um, I don't I don't have a ton of time these days. I have a job now. Congratulations. And, uh, I play on my own team and I coach a team. So that's kind of all my nights. Alrighty. Well, Hash, thank you again. Take care and good luck. Take care. Cheers. All right. Uh, we're just about wrapping up the podcast now, but we still have confessions to do. Not a lot of highlights this week. Be sure to get those highlights in to your team rep whenever you can, or just DM either myself or Puppy. We'll be, we'll, we'll be sure it gets to the appropriate spots. We got a couple highlights for you. Or not highlights. Forgive me. We got a couple confessions for you. Um, Someone says, we are ready to 4-0 Saturn Snow Leopards twice no jinx all of to matt and his ego um are we going to talk about how xys 1v3 to seven sins on volskaya i didn't see it please send me the link please send me the link but honestly i don't i don't put it past him xys is an incredible mccree um last podcast mattie was saying you know it, he is he is definitely one of the gemstones of 05 heads in the thanos gauntlet that is that team um <laughs> but um xys incredible player no doubt 
Night Ops Academy is bush as fuck. I don't know what that means. Um, I'm the best Zen in OWP, no cap. I don't know. I don't know about that. If it's Rush, maybe. Um, <laughs> if Opsit is the best Zen Yada in the league, why can't he graduate? He's sandbagging. <laughs> 4B idiot. Thank yep. you. Um, bring back Solus. Uh, you know, she's in China right now. Uh, I'm sure she'll be back soon. Pugs are better than anime watch party. Debatable, but okay. Um, <laughs> You're talking about the anime god over here, so. Right. Uh, let's make this an anime server when OWP dies. That's a big if, my friend. I'd be down, though. <laughs> um, feel it's like. Die. I feel like some people in the league need to be reminded that this was created primarily for player development and that whining at all costs mentality is inappropriate for this league. Oof. That's a little topical. I think there were some rumors going around of people looking to force forfeits as a result of that. And honestly, I uh, I, 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 I don't know if I can endorse that sort of behavior. Um, always try to play your games. Be a good person. Be the type of hero your Overwatch main wants you to be, unless you're a Doomfist main. In which case, don't be the type of hero your Overwatch main wants you to be. Um... I appreciate you, Forebears. You're very kind and generous to me, and I don't feel I'm as kind back to you. Are you just, a... are you just, you're making these up. I'm now, not. I swear I will share the screen. I will share the screen. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, it's very true. It's very true. Forebears. Oh, well, you know, that's very, very kind. Um, yeah. DM me. Let's queue together sometime. That sounds fun. I'm starting to become a weeb. It started out with JoJo, and it's become a lot more manga, binging, and playing, and playing for Verve. This was all after my girlfriend broke up with me. I think that has something to do with it. Playing for Verve? I, the band for Verve? I, like, I, I was... Um, don't work, I it? think they mean, and, and watching on Verve, like VRV, that that other streaming service. Maybe, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, anyway, maybe. just want to say love y'all for the pride icons. Thank you. That was all credit to both myself and Spidey, who made it animated. Be sure to show him lots of love. Uh, thoughts on Night Ops Academy versus Seven Cents Academy and the overall Academy standings. Where were you the past hour? Um, undefeated, by the way. That is 05 heads. Okay. Um, let's see. <laughs> uh, I need Orb. Please, for the love of God, keep Orb on me. Please, bro. It's the only thing us Rhines alive. Keep us al keep keeps us Rhines alive in goats. Please, bro. Just keep Orb on me. <laughs> Is that like a snapshot from like the, the it's game a snapshot last night, or is it's it... a snapshot from every tank main's inner inner dogma ever. <laughs> um just in comp all the time, like for God's sake. Okay. Um sorry, but the uh I'm I'm not gonna say that one. Alright. Well those are the confessions <laughs> we have. Um you can DM me that one. I want to see. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Well, it's just a little political, and frankly, I mean, we're here to play Overwatch. We're not here to talk about random ass, you know, protests that are going on right now. Uh, support for what you believe in, unless that's like I don't know, not vaccinating your kids. I don't know. Um, in any case, we have just last minute closing comments right over here. Um, okay, so. Um, upcoming games, um, O5 Heads versus Lightbringers Leftovers, that's gonna be Thursday, Lightbringers Legacy versus Unknown Academy tonight at 8 EST, other than that, um, hey, you know, thanks, thanks for being here, thank you for everyone who came on, and, uh, you know, were able to definitely, you know, share their insights with us, thank you all for listening through, like, a near two-hour podcast, that's ridiculous, that means so, 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 so much, um, and if you don't know what Overwatch Pretenders is, we're a bronze to diamond, uh, yeah, 3499, bronze to diamond league dedicated to improving and uh, really grinding out our skills in a very positive environment. Check us out if you haven't already for just dropping by. Um, as always, uh, if you liked what you heard, hey, let us know. If you didn't like what you heard, hey, let us know too. That sort of feedback helps out a lot. And uh, I mean, hey, we'll see, you, uh, we'll see you all in one week. Happy summer. This is Four Bears and Puppy signing off. Cheers. Oh no. Where's my goodbye mm -hmm. screen? Ah, there it is. Bye.
Sí, sí. 